What's up, San Antonio? This is Rusty from Rob's Metalworks. I'm here at the White Rabbit with the band Divine Heresy. I have Dino here with me. Dino, how are you doing today? I'm doing really good. I'm awesome. Glad to be back here in San Antonio. Well, Love the Mexican food. Divine Heresy is a new band. A lot of people, your reputation precedes you. However, Divine Heresy is a <laughs> bad, brand new... In a bad way or a good way? <laughs> in a very good way. However, uh, Divine Heresy is a brand new band. So tell us what Divine Heresy brings that some of your other projects haven't brought to the metal scene. Well, you know, I kind of like threw in everything that I've created before. You know, everything from Old Fear Factory to Brujeria to Asesino. All those intense elements mixed into one, and that's pretty much what creates divine heresy by now everybody knows how meticulous you were in choosing your band members how does joe fit into this whole picture because i know he was a latecomer yeah joe was definitely a latecomer we were holding out for a great bass player um you know i i, I found tim young when he was on tour with nile and he also toured with hank williams with hank williams the third and he's an amazing drummer i think everybody knows who he is tommy vex was a newcomer uh no one really knew who he was but amazing talent I've, obviously anybody who's heard the cd knows how well he could sing and uh, we just needed that one final piece. And uh, I saw Joe Payne, he was also on tour with Niall. They were opening up for King Diamond. I met him at the House of Blues and he gave, we exchanged phone numbers. And then two years later, he calls me and I'm like, who's Joe Payne? Because you know, we, you know, we hadn't kept in touch or nothing. So he had called me up and I'm like, I asked Tim, I go, Tim, who's, who's Joe Payne? That's the bass player from Niall. I'm like, oh yeah, that guy's amazing. He was in before I even like auditioned him or anything, he was in. He's an amazing bass player. He can play guitar. He can play bass. He plays bass like a guitar. You know, he can do sweeps on bass, and he can do it all. I'm looking forward to seeing him on tour. Now, your CD dropped in August, right? Uh, how has been? What's the reaction been for it so far? Uh, the reaction's been pretty good. You know, I've been surprised how well uh, it's been received, and it seems like the metal community really likes it. And like, like you said earlier, you know, my reputation that people know that, you know, whenever Dino comes out with something new, that it's going to be killer and it's going to be intense. And it's going to be what they want to hear. You know, I've been doing it. I've been doing it since 1990, really. You know, since I started Fear Factory back in the day. And you know, of course, people know me from Brujeria and Asesino and all that stuff. And you know, people know that I'm going to bring them something good. Tell us a little bit about the vibe on the CD. It's got a little bit different than what you've done in the past. Um, yeah, it is. It, I would say in some ways, it's it's kind of a return to of uh, what I did. You know, back in the day, a little bit more intense than before, you know, when FF4 started, we were kind of more of a death metal band, and, you know, obviously playing with someone as talented as Tim Young, you know, he brings all that technical death metal element to it, and so, you know, that made it more intense, and of course, you know, Tommy has a really killer melodic vibe about him as well, too, and we decided to throw that in the mix, you know, all mixed up with blast beats, you know, killer guitar riffs, insane double bass beats, brutal vocals, you know, to just killer beautiful melodic stuff. I have to agree, it is beautiful and melodic, so I'm a real big fan of it. Everybody in this band is, is has their own talent, you know, and it all pretty much shines on this record. You know, like I said, Tim, an amazing drummer, Tommy, an amazing vocalist, and it all comes out, you know. Okay. You worked with uh, Dirty Icon Productions with Logan Matter. How did that go about? How was that, how was that experience? Logan Matter has been, uh, you know, a friend of ours for, well, a friend of mine for a very long time ever since he was in Machine Head way back in the early 90s. And uh, over the last, you know, 10 years or so, he's built this studio and he started doing a lot of bands, a lot of local bands, and started getting his name out there and stuff like that. And he got really good. And uh, when we were doing the Roadrunner All-Stars, I'm not sure if anybody's familiar with that, Roadrunner All-Stars, all the different people from Roadrunner all got together and made a record. Anyways, Logan, we were recording in his studio and we kept on having problems with, uh, with the recording gear every time we had to call Logan. Say, hey, Logan, come down and, you know, start working on his part with us, you know, fix his computer. Logan's in there, it's like, <laughs> like super fast. We're like, wow. And we just saw how good he was. And so he started working with me when we were doing that. And then it was just a natural thing for me to use him for everything else after that. Um, you know, we got along really well. He's a great producer, great, enge great engineer. He has a great ear uh, and a good friend. And he just knows, he just knows, you know, he's a guitar player. He knows how the guitar should sound, you know. He knows how those kick drums should sound, you know. And uh, we also work with this other guy named Lucas Banker, and Lucas Banker is uh, more of like a vocal coach type of thing. Like if you're stuck on a word or something, you know, he's the kind of guy who can like bring in that extra word, or he's that kind of guy who can come up with another melody. And so Dirty Icon is, is Logan, Logan Mater and Lucas Banker. It sounds good. Okay, uh, Bleed the Fifth is, you know, your new album, obviously. What does Bleed the Fit, how does that rank among all the stuff that you've done? Because like I said, your reputation precedes you. You've got a lot of stuff under your belt. 
where does that rank as far as you're concerned, music-wise and everything? That's kind of hard for me to answer, you know. Um, you know, I love everything that I do. I back up everything that I've created. And uh, I just think this is another great album in my collection, in my legacy. You know? uh, what about touring plans? You mentioned uh, before we started the interview that you're going over to Europe pretty soon. So what other types of plans do you have? Well, uh, it's just going to be keep on touring. That's the main thing, you know. Now nowadays, with you know, so much downloading and stuff like that, you just got to stay on the road and you got to keep, you know, uh, promoting your band and, and just playing in front of the kids. And that's one of the cool things about starting over again. Is like, you know, you know, Divine Heresy is definitely starting at the bottom again. And we're definitely coming up. And it's really cool because I get to sit at the merch desk every night. I get to sign autographs and talk to all those kids and you know all those people who followed me over the years. And I think it's just really cool and, and just you know stay on the road and just. You know, promote it that way. Uh, when you've on, been on tour, do you find that you're finding new fans or is it just a lot of old fans that are coming back into play? Both. A lot of both. A lot of definitely the old, you know, the old, uh, older fans who definitely followed me for a while, you know, since the beginning of my career. And, you know, of course, the new generation of kids who are coming out and just getting into Divine Heresy and maybe, maybe you know, gone back and bought old Fear Factor records or maybe just discovered Brujeria or, you know, Asesino or any of that stuff. And, it's really kind of cool to, just to see all those people. And you have every once in a while you got that one guy who brings like everything you've ever done, you know, and you're sitting there for like an hour signing everything. You know that that's cool, man. They're, they're those are real good collectors, you know? or eBayers, either one. Right? <laughs> you can find anything on eBay nowadays. So uh, obviously this is a video show, and we love the video for uh, Fail Creation. Tell us a little bit about the experience you've had. I've heard it was quite an experience, so tell us a little bit about that. Well, that was filmed in an area called the Salt Sea, which is pretty much uh, what it was. It was, a, it was a place for the military, like a Navy base, to like test like you know their weapons and stuff like that back in the early 40s and 50s. And then it became like a little vacation spot. And then, you know, uh, the lake started getting a bunch of like people dumping stuff in there and a lot of the sewage from Mexico came into there, you know, and stuff like that. So the water became really contaminated and really full of salt. So all the fish would die. Then all the birds, all the birds would come in, they would eat the fish and they would die too. So you just have this area of just carnage of wow. dead fish bones and bird bones. And we thought it was just a great place to shoot a video. <laughs> uh, it was extremely hot. It was like when we were there, it was like 115, 118 degrees. And, uh, you know, Joe Payne, who's not really used to the heat, um, he ended up when we were tracking. He ended up throwing up, Ugh. and uh, it's really cool because like I don't know, maybe someday we might release it behind the scenes footage type stuff. Yeah. But it was really cool to see him throw up. <laughs> well, uh, do you have any last comments? This maybe something I haven't touched that you might want to talk about. Yes, Asesino will be coming back over here. San Antonio will be playing Sneakers. I believe it's December 29th, 30th. I'm sorry, my fault. December 30th. You can edit that. Uh, December 30th, Sneakers, Asesino. It's going to be brutal. It's going to be killer. And I can't wait to be back here. Awesome. Sounds good. Well, Dino, thank you very much for this interview. Once again, Rob's Metalworks, huge fans, huge fans of Dino, huge fans of Divine Heresy. San Antonio, you saw Dino from Divine Heresy here on Rob's Metalworks, only on Rob's Metalworks. <laughs>